In this video, we're going to introduce right triangle trigonometry. You may have heard of sine, cosine, and tangent before. Well, I'm starting from scratch here, and I'm going to assume you don't know any of this. Well, here are four right triangles. The right angle is the largest looking one down here in the lower right corner. And I've selected each one of these to include a, an acute angle of 30 degrees. Now you probably know that the three angles have to add up to 180. So if you have 30 and 90, that's 120, you're going to need 60 more. So it's pretty easy to figure out what that, that other acute angle is. And in every case, it's 60 degrees. And then you may remember from geometry that if there are two or more triangles that have matching angles, in other words, 30 matches 30, 90 matches 90, and 60 matches 60, then those triangles are said to be similar. And the big deal with triangle similarity is that there's lots and lots of ratios you can form, and those ratios come out equal. And because right triangles are so important, we're going to give these ratios special names. So let's take the case of, here's 30 degrees, this little acute angle. Opposite, all the way opposite the triangle is a lag that's measured at 1.5 units, could be centimeters. The hypotenuse of this triangle is three. And the ratio of opposite leg to hypotenuse is 1.5 to three turns out to be 0.5. Now this right triangle has larger measurements. The opposite leg is bigger. The hypotenuse is bigger. And yet when you divide those and form a quotient, it comes out to be 0.5. And here are two more examples where you can see the very same thing is going on. Here's 30 degrees. Here's the opposite leg. The opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse is 2 divided by 4 is 0.5. That ratio of opposite leg to hypotenuse is called the sine of 30 degrees. It's called the sine of 30 degrees and it's abbreviated like this. And it turns out if you have a right triangle and one of the acute angles is 30, this sine ratio is always 0.5. On the other hand, if you have 35 degrees, you're going to get a ratio bigger than 0.5. There's another very, very important ratio where instead of dividing the opposite leg by the hypotenuse, if you have an acute angle down here of 30 degrees and you divide the adjacent leg, by the hypotenuse, you'll get a ratio of 0.866, not just in this little triangle, but in this next slightly larger triangle, where the adjacent leg and the hypotenuse are both bigger numbers, yet their ratio is the same. And you can see that's true all the way across. The name of this ratio is the cosine of 30 degrees. And I don't care how large or how small the triangle is, if it's a right triangle, and if one of the acute angles is 30, then dividing the leg adjacent to the 30 by the hypotenuse always comes out to 0.866 because that is the cosine of 30 degrees. Okay, the third important ratio is called the tangent. In the tangent, we don't use the hypotenuse at all. But again, if you have a triangle with a 30 degree angle, and it's, it's got to be a right triangle, okay? But if there's an acute 30 degree angle here, dividing the opposite leg by the adjacent leg, opposite over adjacent for a 30 degree angle results in a ratio of 0.577. And I think I've made a big deal out of this, big enough deal. It's, a, it's consistent regardless of the size of the right triangle. So the only thing that matters is you have to have a right triangle and you have to have a 30 degree angle. And then opposite over adjacent is the tangent of 30 degrees, and it's always 0.577 to the nearest thousands. This is the way we abbreviate the tangent of 30 degrees. Okay, other things to keep in mind. How do we know which leg is opposite and which leg is adjacent? Well, it's all relative. You have to have one of the two acute angles in mind before you can go applying these, these words. So if I'm looking at this angle, this acute angle theta, that's a Greek letter from the Greek alphabet, theta has as an opposite leg segment AB and as an adjacent leg segment BC. 
And this is not a leg at all. This is the longest side. It's called the hypotenuse. So this is opposite and this is adjacent relative to this angle. But if I have this angle in mind instead, alpha, then this is not the correct label anymore because this side is the leg that's opposite alpha and this leg is the leg that's adjacent to alpha. I would have to reverse these labels. Okay, so here's a summary of the three important uh, trigonometric ratios and you need to know that uh, when these ratios are formed invertedly so in other words instead of sine being opposite or hypotenuse if I write the hypotenuse divided by the opposite leg like this I get three more trig functions they all have names so sine's reciprocal is cosecant Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosecant is hypotenuse over opposite. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Secant. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, and it's hypotenuse over adjacent. And then tangent has an inverse or a reciprocal. It's called cotangent. And it's adjacent over opposite. Now, if you're feeling overwhelmed that we have six brand new ratios that all have names that are a little strange to begin with, uh, rest assured I won't give you any more ratios. And second, there is a way to uh, remember these ratios. Somehow I went all the way through uh, my ma high school mathematical training without encountering this, but this device is a word, and it's pronounced, I suppose, Sokatoa. Sokatoa. It's a way to remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and that tangent is opposite over adjacent. But we're going to keep this table handy today as we work through examples. And here's one I had never encountered until recently, which is uh, pretty surprising. To remember the reciprocal functions, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, there's another word. And I suppose it would be pronounced something like cho sha ko cho sha -keo. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? It's not as good as Sokotoa because it's got two of these uh, syllables beginning with C. And here the C means cosecant, and here the C means cotangent. So that's not quite as good. But nevertheless, if you like this kind of thing, uh, we will refer back to this table frequently today. Now, one more uh, comment regarding reciprocals. You see how the sign is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cos... Uh, secant is hypotenuse over opposite. We, we said that sine and cosecant are reciprocal functions. Well, that can only be the case if cosecant is 1 over sine, which is also the case that sine is 1 over cosecant. So this is just another way to state the reciprocal nature of things like the secant and the cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine. Cosine is 1 over secant. And finally, cotangent is 1 over tangent. Tangent is 1 over cotangent. Well, that's it for introductions. What comes next is examples. And we have a lot of them. We're already 8 minutes into this, so we're going to do our best. First thing you want to do, at some point today, you're going to need a, a uh, calculator. So turn it on. And all of our examples today are in... Um, degrees. So find a mode button and make sure that the uh, angle option is set to degree and not radian. And if you've done that already, you're going to be able to participate. So we'll bring that back when we need it. Example one, find the six trig values of the angle theta in the following right triangle. That theta didn't come through very well, but there it is. Okay. Well, this is the, probably the table that we're going to want to refer to when we do this example. So we'll keep that handy. And what's the sign? Okay, relative to this angle, the opposite side, the opposite leg is 4. And the hypotenuse is 5 regardless of which angle you're at. So opposite over hypotenuse is four fifths. Okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
This is the opposite leg relative to that angle. And so the answer here is 4 fifths. If you're going to do sine, you might as well go ahead and do cosecant while you're at it. Because to get the cosecant of theta, instead of opposite over hypotenuse, you do hypotenuse over opposite. And indeed, it should look like the reciprocal of sine. So let's go ahead and do cosine now. Cosine uses the leg adjacent to our angle. It's the ratio of that to the hypotenuse. It's 3 fifths. And you might as well go ahead and do secant then while you're at it. Secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine. It's 5 thirds. And then last but not least, let's get the tangent figured out. Remember with tangent, we don't use the hypotenuse at all. Tangent uses only legs, and it's opposite leg divided by adjacent leg. So that's 4 over 3, and then the cotangent would be the reciprocal of that. And that's 3 fourths. Hey, we're doing trigonometry. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah, um, I took a class in high school called physics that used a lot of trigonometry, but I had no trigonometric training. So I got the five-minute explanation from my physics teacher, and we were off to the races, and it worked out all right. Turned out to be one of my favorite classes in high school. Next, example two, find the six trig values of the angle theta in the following right triangle. Wait a minute here. There's a missing leg. It's the adjacent leg. We have the opposite leg, five. We have the hypotenuse, seven. So we could right now do the following. We could figure out what the sine of theta is. Okay, remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. I've got the opposite leg, I've got the hypotenuse, so I can form the sine ratio, it's 5, 7. And I guess while I'm at it, I could go ahead and get the uh, cosecant ratio just by taking the reciprocal of that. 7 fifths it is. But if you want to do any more of the uh, remaining four ratios, you need to know this. So let's go ahead and label that with something like, I don't know, y. And let's write down the Pythagorean theorem, where I square the two legs, and I set it equal to, I add those together and set that equal to the square of the hypotenuse. And then I just do a little bit of arithmetic here. This is y squared plus 25 equals 49. And I subtract 25 from both sides, and I get y squared equals 24. I take the square root of both sides, and I'm only concerned about the positive square root, and it is... 24. Now remember, 24 is 4 times 6. There's a perfect square factor of 4 in there. So a better way to write this is root 4 times root 6, which of course is just 2 root 6. And now we know how long the leg is adjacent to theta. It's 2 root 6. And we're going to need to uh, have that value to do things like, like what? Well, let's get the cosine now. Cosine theta is the adjacent leg divided by the hypotenuse. That's 2 root 6 over 7, and that looks good, and we're going to leave it like that. What about the secant? Well, secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. It's the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent leg, and that looks like this. Now, I would be inclined to mark that right, but uh, your instructor might say, no, 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 you can't have a radical of any kind, like a square root of 6 in the divisor. So they want you to multiply the top and the bottom of this by root 6, which would look like, I guess this is an improved version, it's 7 root 6 over, this times this is just 6, it's the square root of 36, so it's 6 times 2 is 12. So I think most would agree that that is a better way to write the secant than just that but they're equal and they're both correct. And we're going to run into that nonsense again because we're going to have to figure out tangent, all right? So right now, tangent theta is opposite over adjacent leg for this angle. That's 5 over 2 root 6. And for reasons that I explained up here, I'd multiply both these by root 6, and I'd end up with 5 root 6 over 12. So that's the best way to write tangent. And now cotangent. 
of theta is just the adjacent leg, its length divided by the opposite leg. That's 2 root 6 over 5. So when they ask you to find all six of these trig values, and you're starting off from a position where one of the legs or something else is missing, it can be a lot of work. Let's try example three here. Suppose theta is an acute angle in a right triangle and that sine theta is 5 thirteenths. Sketch such a triangle and find the remaining uh, trig ratios. Well, the idea here is there's more than one triangle that could come up with a sine like 5 thirteenths. You remember at the beginning of the uh, discussion today, I showed you four triangles that all had a sine of one half because they all had a 30 degree angle. So, but one possibility here is you make a triangle, you put theta down in the corner here, maybe left, lower left corner. And you say, if that's where theta is, and this is the right angle, sine is supposed to be opposite leg divided by hypotenuse. So I can put a five here and a 13 here, but be aware you can also put a 10 and a 26 and a whole lot of other numbers that would satisfy this ratio. Okay, we're gonna go find all five of the remaining trig ratios, are we? Not until we know what this is. So put an X here. Write down the Pythagorean theorem, leg one squared plus leg two squared equals hypotenuse squared. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. This is 25 on the left, 13 squared is 169. And we subtract 25 from both sides to arrive at X squared equals 144. And this problem was designed to come out quite nice. The positive square root of 144 is just 12. So that's how big 12 is, or excuse me, that's how big the adjacent side is. Okay, so sine is 5 thirteenths. That means cosecant is 13 fifths. Okay, we've well, got the easy one first. What about cosine? Well, that's adjacent leg divided by hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent leg divided by hypotenuse. So in this case, that's 12 thirteenths. And the secant must be the reciprocal of that. So that's 13 twelfths. Finally, the tangent. Remember tangent. Remember Sokotoa. Tangent doesn't involve the hypotenuse at all. It's opposite over adjacent. And so in this case, the opposite of theta is this leg five and the adjacent leg is 12. Tangent is 5 twelfths and cotangent is 12 fifths. And that concludes example three. Example four. Suppose alpha is an acute angle in a triangle and that the tangent of alpha is 4 thirds. Sketch such a triangle and find the remaining five trig ratios. Okay. Uh, a possibility is a right triangle that looks like this. This time I'll put the alpha up here in the corner. And that means that relative to alpha, this is the opposite side, opposite leg, and this is the adjacent leg. And for tangent, I need opposite over adjacent. So I could put four and three like that. If you have your alpha down here, you need four here and three here. There are other numbers that work, of course. 6 and 8 would work. 9 and 12 would work. And then um, using the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to need to know how big the hypotenuse H is here. So one more time. One leg squared added to the square of another leg is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. This is 9 and 16 is 25. And the positive square root here is 5. You're probably familiar with one of these Pythagorean whole number triples. This is the three, four, five triple. Now find the other ratios relative to alpha being up here. Tangent is four thirds. Let's get the easy one. Cotangent of alpha is three fourths. That's just the reciprocal. How about the sine of alpha? Well, that's the opposite leg divided by the hypotenuse. And then the cosecant 
alpha is just the reciprocal of that. And finally, we'll get the cosine of alpha. That'll be the adjacent leg. It's length 3 divided by the hypotenuse's measure, which is 5. So that's 3 fifths. And then the secant of alpha is a reciprocal of the cosine, and that's 5 thirds. Hopefully we don't have to do too many more of these where they make us do all six trig ratios, but I think it's good practice. And if you're uh, actually being introduced to this topic today, I you know, more practice is better. It's no different than basketball, is it? Okay, let theta be an acute angle in a right triangle where the secant is 14 ninths. Sketch the triangle and find the cotangent. Well, I'm just not sure, but they're talking about theta here. So I'll make a right triangle, and this time I'll orient it like this. And it says that the secant is 14 ninths. So remember, that's um, hypotenuse over adjacent side. It's just the reciprocal of what cosine is. Secant is hypotenuse over um, over the adjacent side. So we're certainly going to put the 14 here where the hypotenuse is. And then it really depends where you're going to put theta. If theta is up in this corner, then this is the adjacent leg. And so you want to put the 9 there. If you put theta down here, you'd have to put 9 there. And let's see, they only want us to figure out cotangent, but you can't get tangent or cotangent unless you know this missing leg. So we're back at it. Let's put an x here. Let's go x squared plus 9 squared equals 14 squared. That's x squared plus 81. 14 squared is 196. You're going to subtract 81 from both sides to come up with x squared equals 115 which means x is the square root of 115. So, x is root 115. I now know both the opposite and adjacent legs for theta. And to make the cotangent of theta, I would just write cotangent theta is adjacent leg over opposite leg. That's 9 over root 115. And as you can see, we still have this issue where we're dividing by a square root. So a better possible way to write this is 9 root 115 over 115. And all I did to arrive at that was multiply both of these by the square root of 115. All right, example 6. A right triangle has a hypotenuse of 10 and one acute angle of 30 degrees. Find the measure of the leg adjacent to the 30 degree angle. Make a quick sketch here. And uh, there's a 30 degree angle down here, let's say. And the other angle, of course, we know is 60 degrees. And the hypotenuse is 10. And they want us to find the measure of the leg that's adjacent to the 30. So they want this. So which one of our three principal trig ratios involves an adjacent leg and a hypotenuse? Yes, you're right. It's cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I write cosine 30, I get x over 10, adjacent over hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 10, and uh, you'll get 10 times cosine 30 equals x. And you dial that up on a calculator. I think I already know the answer to that, but just in case, let's dial it up. So 10 times cosine 30 is 8.66 yes so to the nearest thousandth it is x equals 8.660 now keep in mind um we could have used the 60 degrees up here and then x would now be the opposite leg so you could have gone sine 60 is x over 10 and solve that all right Example 7. There is a much faster way to do this. From geometry, I think we know that if this is 45 and this is 90, that's got to be 45 also. And so that it's an isosceles triangle. And isosceles triangles, right, isosceles right triangles have 
equal legs, I think the answer is going to be 8. But let's see if we can do this one the hard way. That's right. Let's, re relative to 45, what do we call these two legs? They're called opposite and adjacent. Opposite and adjacent. And of course, the trig ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is the tangent. So I could write tan 45 is the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Now I've seen this uh, taught different ways how to proceed from here. How to isolate an x when it's down here in the denominator. There is no better or faster way than simply to trade places with the x and the tangent. And you will see that this works out. If your teacher taught you a different way to do it, that's fine. I just know that this is the best and fastest way. And so, so watch this. I'll go 8 divided by tan 45. And I'll get 8. You know why that is? Because the tangent of 45 degrees is 1. So the answer is 8. And yes, I think a, a good student of geometry would have seen that right away. So, two more quick examples here. We'll try to keep this well under 30 minutes. For the triangle in the image below, find the value of the sine of theta and the cosine of alpha. Sine of theta. Sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Here's theta. Opposite is 3 and hypotenuse is 5. That's 3 fifths. And then what was this again? Cosine of alpha? Well, the cosine of alpha, here's alpha. We would want to put the adjacent over the hypotenuse. But the adjacent is this leg here. 3 is adjacent to alpha. And hypotenuse is still 5. By the way, we get the same answer. Also find values of tan theta and cotangent of alpha. I think there's something going on here. I wonder what it is. Tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent is 3 fourths. But cotangent of alpha, here's alpha. Remember, cotangent is adjacent over opposite. And that's this divided by that. It's the same thing. Well, that really is what the co is when we talk about cosine, cotangent, cosecant. The co stands for complementary. Uh, you know, in geometry, two angles that add up to 90 degrees are called complementary angles. And there's a property that uh, is illustrated here pretty well. The sine of one angle and the cosine of its complement always come out the same. The tangent of an angle and the cotangent of that angle's Complement always comes out the same. Okay, last example. A right triangle has an acute angle of 25 degrees. Find the value beta of the other angle, then use a calculator to figure out secant and cosecant for beta. So, how to use a calculator for that? Well, here's what you can't do. If this is 25 degrees, this is 90. Since we've already used 90 degrees of a total of 180, these two have to add up to 90. They're complementary. So what's 90 minus 25? That's 65 degrees, and that's the complement of 25. Okay, between these two, there, there is no button on my calculator for secant. You quite literally have to do, um, so this is alpha, and this is beta. And you quite literally have to do, to get secant of alpha, you have to do 1 over cosine 25. So that's 1 over cosine 25. And we're going to get 1.103. So secant of alpha is 1.103. Now to get the cosecant of beta, remember what cosecant is. It's 1 over, uh, well, it's hypotenuse over opposite. But uh, previously we had a relationship where we learned that uh, cosecant is 1 over sine. 
and there is no cosecant button on your calculator. So in order to figure out what the cosecant of beta is, you're going to have to go to your calculator and do 1 over the sine of 65. Now it looks like this, 1 over sine 65. And of course we get the same answer. Why do we get the same answer? Because secant of 25 and cosecant of 65, remember, 65 and 25 are complementary angles. So the secant and the cosecant of those two complementary angles should come out the same, and indeed they did. Well, that's it for today. I uh, hope you enjoy this. Maybe learn something. My name's Eric. Have a great day.